The key to selling anything online is amazing photos of your product. In this tutorial, I'll show you how I make mockups for my Etsy listings in Silhouette Studio using the warp panel. Once you master the skill, each new photo will only take a few minutes and you will see better sales. I'll show you my setup for creating my own mockups at the end, so be sure to stick around. Hey everyone! Welcome back. If you are just tuning in for the first time, welcome. I'm Brenda Lambert. I'm a TJC licensed instructor for Silhouette, and I hope that you're going to join our little crafting community. We would love to have you. And there's something new here every week. Today we are going to learn how to make mock-ups in Silhouette Studio. Now, if you do not sell online, that's fine. Stick around anyway, because we're going to be using the warp panel and it is amazing. You don't want to miss out on this. Now, if everyone is ready, let's do this. It's always best to start by bringing your image into Silhouette Studio. Next, you need to find the best dimensions for your mock-up. This can usually be done with a quick Google search. I'm using Etsy as an example, so I typed in suggested size for an Etsy listing pick. I found that I need to make my image no smaller than 2,667 pixels wide and 2,000 pixels tall. There are a lot of places that you can go for mock-up templates, but my favorites are Canva and Creative Fabrica. I'll put links to both of those sites in the description. I'm going to work in Canva today so that you can see how to size your images properly. Go to Create a Design. I did a quick search here to see if they had a pre-made template, but they do not. So you want to go down to Custom Size and enter the width and height in pixels. Click on Create New Design and it will generate a template for you. You can click on the Elements tab and search for your mockup. I'm going to start with a tumbler. You want something that fits the product that you are showing and your brand. I'm going to use this one because it's nice and bright and my design is very dark. It will give a lot of contrast and make the design stand out more. Click on the image you want to use and that will bring it onto the design area. Right click and choose set image as background. Go up to the top, click on share, then download. Choose your settings. You want PNG or JPEG, but do not check the transparent background. Click on download again. Next, we're going to merge the mockup into Silhouette. You do not want to change the size of the mockup. Okay, I need to take this one tumbler wrap and split it equally into three parts so that it looks like I'm showing each side of the tumbler. I'll use the knife tool to do this, but it's much easier if I scale the image down to nine inches first. That way I know each section should be three inches. Make sure that the edge of the image is at the zero mark on the grid, then slice the image at three inches and six inches. And you can get a straight cut by holding down the shift key as you drag the knife. I'm going to grab my mock-up image and drag it onto the mat and then send it to the back. Then I can select all three pieces of my design and scale it down until it fits on the mock-up tumblers. This doesn't need to be exact, just close. I'm going to open up the warp panel. We'll be working in the first tab. Now click on the first tumbler section and then choose warp selected image. This will pull up a grid with orange and blue points. You can grab each one of these individually and use them to manipulate the image. The trick is to get the picture to cover the mock-up tumbler completely and get the curves to look natural. You can click off of the selected image to see your progress 
and then click back on it to make further adjustments. When the image is adjusted, you can use the Release Warp button, but I don't usually bother with that when I'm making my mockups. It has a tendency to freeze the program, and if you're just saving as an image, it's not necessary. You would need to release the warp if you are making a cut file. Now I go through this process for each section, and then I use the Print Preview feature to check my work. You can see that the bottom of the first tumbler is different than the other two. So now I'll go back in and fix that. Check the print preview again. And I don't know if this is helpful for anyone else, but I always notice flaws in the print preview that I don't catch on the design map. Select all of the elements, group, and go up to file. Choose Save Selection As. At this point, you can save as a JPEG, and you have to have Business Edition or higher for this. This box will pop up and you want to enter 300 for the DPI. This should bring your pixels up to the requirements and ensure a quality image. We're going to do a shirt mock-up next, so let's bring a different design onto the mat. And this one is just a basic SVG. Oh, and don't forget to hit the like button if you found this video helpful so far. That helps it reach more people, and I appreciate the love. Back over to Canva. We can delete the first mock-up and use the same template. This time we're going to search for a shirt mock-up. Scroll to find the image that you like and click on it to bring it to the design area. Then right click and choose set image as background. Click on share at the top of the screen, then download and download again. Merge it into Silhouette Studio. Right click on your design and choose bring to front. Place the design on the mockup and start scaling it to the size you need. Remember you want it to look realistic. In this mockup the model's shoulders are slanted and we want the top of the design to match that. So grab the green dot above your design and use it to tilt the design until it lines up with the shoulders. I use the warp feature to angle it just a bit more. This makes it look like it's wrapping around with the fabric of the shirt. Open up the print preview, check it over, and make sure that the top of the design matches the angles of the shoulders and that the bottom of the design matches the angle of the waist and that it still looks natural. I think that's pretty good. Now let's duplicate this, but place the original design on the shirt without modification. When we look at them side by side, the differences are subtle, but our brain picks up on the fact that the second one isn't quite right, more than our eyes will. And it is our brain that tells us if we want to buy something or pass. Now this is ready to save. Go to File, Save Selection As, Save to Hard Drive. You want to name the file, choose JPEG or PNG, and remember to set the DPI to 300. You can do a mock-up of literally anything as long as you have a picture of a blank. If you cannot find a picture online, you can always make one yourself. You just use the blank that you're going to be using for the project, place it in an uncluttered area with good lighting and a few small details to make it pretty. Take your photo and upload it to Silhouette Studio and add your design. I have a whole setup for this, but you can get quality photos without all of this if you just pay attention to the background and lighting. Now, 
You've got this. So go create an amazing mock-up and I'll see you in the next video.